All right, so we'll have some free discussion here. Uh, okay. Question on 1318 <coughs> part A, that says, uh, list all the relations from A to B, and uh, let's see. So let's go and see what a relation is. A relation is a subset of A cross B. Right, so I have um, A1. Yes. Yes. But the hint says there's two of them. Yes, so you do need the empty set. That's, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, then part B, yeah. about yes. A1, A2, empty set. Uh, I think that's right. But they well, no, no, there's more. There's one there's more. There's more. Now, see, now the thing is that relations are not elements of A cross B. They're subsets of A cross B. Yeah. So, A1, B1. B1. This, you see, you, you, here, this is good, you see? You put this as a set. Well, yeah. Which These is correct. Sets. No, no, well, well but, but yes. See, you have, you have this, and then you have a comma there. Mm -hmm. This is a set. Right. This set of nothing. So all of these have to be sets. This is a set with one element. This is a set with one element. This is a set with zero element. Look at here, for instance. This element of this, this relation consists of three points in right. A cross B. It's a subset of A cross B. Oh, okay. Right. So he's just showing like, you know, you got a mapping of one to four and then two to five and so forth, but you got all these, you got all of them. So there's your interior ones as well, the interior mappings. So you can have something like a... Uh, well, you shouldn't one. say mapping, really. Yeah, and I'm probably using it. Yeah, I probably am using it. I mean, if you wanted to graph this... Mm -hmm. um, if but it's, all, it's basically like all of the... I mean... Yes. You, I mean, if you wanted to graph this one, 1316, mm -hmm. and you take all the points in the... You draw a Cartesian coordinate right. plane, and take all the points that have x coordinate 1, and y coordinate four, five, and six. That would be three points. Right. And then x coordinate two. That would be three. Four, points. five, six, three points, and then three more points. Right. Now, any subset of those nine points is a relation. So there are lots and lots of relations. Right. And it says list all. All right. So then, in this case, you only have a few points. But if you if you if you plotted these points in the plane, suppose a was three, for instance. Mm -hmm. You could plot those. You could plot all the points in A cross B. Uh, Which would be three, one, and three, two. Yes. You could plot three, one, and three, two. Well, then just do it in, up there, and you can. Right. I get it. It's just some arbitrary element A in. Because like this one with the three different things, yeah. you've got these by themselves. Yes. But you can also have yes. them together. Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Yeah, so yes. yeah, okay, I'm, I got you, Dr. Yeah. You're talking about the individual <coughs> sets plus the sets of two pairings yeah. and then the set of... Yes. Yeah. yeah, you say set right. of in, in, one element set. So yeah. yeah, two one element sets and one two element set. Right. And one zero element set. I got you. Okay, okay so uh, I just got to get caught from the jargon. I got to get caught. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's certainly very confusing for many people. Well, but the truth is we are math majors, so we're going to have to pick this up anyways. So, yeah. I mean, I hate to say that. You've heard me say it lots of times, too. It's like, and I myself... Right. From you know, I think that what I said may be, may be a useful strategy. Is you, you, plot the, you plot all the points in A cross B, mm -hmm. and then just select su sets of, subsets of those. But I think you got you got the idea. Yeah, I think you got yeah. the idea here. Because that's one and then the individual single. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and that's right. Okay, so then binary, it's, I'm assuming A cross A. Yes. Yeah. Onto A. So then A to A, B to B, A, B, and B, A. And then I all the variations it. in in the whole, yeah. Right. So you've got. So I mean, a uh, one way to think about it is um, how many points in A cross A. Um. You've got 
A to A. Yes. A to B. Yes. B, 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 A. Right. And then the empty set. But. So you got four points. Yeah. And so you've got one, two, three, four. And then one, two. And then. You've got three more right there. And then you have a group of three. There's, there's a lot. There's are, there are a lot, yes. There's a lot. There's a lot. There should be 12 total? Uh, more, mm -hmm. more than that. One, two. They actually have. Two, three. 16. 16, okay. Because there's four. Oh, I'm trying to remember. It's, uh, a lot of these are very, like, if you, Repetitive. if you, yeah, it, once you understand it, you can actually break it down in very simplistic terms. It's just a problem just breaking it down. Well, if I you, mm -hmm. yeah, if you look up here, you can think one element sets, mm -hmm. two element sets, three element sets, mm -hmm. four element sets. You can think about it. You can do it that way. Mm -hmm. My OCD would go backwards. I would start with four and then I'd work my way down. Yes, yeah, that's, yes, that's probably better, yes. Yeah, usually with order and yeah, just to kind of, kind of keep them. Because then you can take 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 away stuff. Okay, I get that one. And then E, fortunately, you don't have to list them all. No, but you have to say how many binaries. Yes. So you have to figure out what the pattern is. Yes. So. The number is bigger than 500. Actually, 500 um, factorial. No, no, I'm sorry. Oh. That's not. Oh. <laughs> no, I think I'm going to have to change that. I want to say 512. All right, so how do you get that? Okay, um, yeah, good question. So. Uh, I have three elements. Yes. Okay, and I know that I'm taking, I'm choosing two out of those three elements to form a point. Um, yes. Okay. Point. Yes. Okay. So three sure. Squared, nine. Yes. Okay. Very good. And then the number of two element points. Um, I'm thinking two to the ninth power. All right, well, so... Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, no, I think you have a good idea, but yeah. when you say, what do you mean by the number of two element points? Uh, what, yeah, good question. Um, I'm kind of basically going along the lines of uh, I mean, the total... Let me see if I can draw it here. Permutations of... Your, what you have here is a grid. And let's okay. see if I can actually do this. Let's do it thick, like this. You've got a grid like this. Okay. Right. I, I'm just in my A, B, C, right? Right. And so you've got nine points like this. Right. And you want all subsets, all possible subsets. Now, one way to think about this is any subset can either include this point or not. Okay. It can either include this point or not. Right. It can either include this point or not. Etc. for all nine points. Okay. So there are two possibilities for, for all nine points. Okay. And you set, and you set will either include or not include any one of all of these nine points. So, to think too much so basically you have two choices for this one. Right. For each of those two choices here, you have two choices for this one. All right, so that's where we're getting the... For each of those two choices there, you have two choices for this one. Correct. Okay, that's kind of... Okay. Thank you for... Yes. Yeah, okay. I was so trying to yes, say yeah, that, no, but yeah. not, I'd I said it... I think you had the right idea, way. just the, just the work. But you yeah. could actually draw a tree, right? Yes, You I could say the set includes this point or not. So that's a, that's a tree. Right? Yeah. Then for each of those two branches, you can say it either another includes this one or not. So you get another two branches. branches. Okay. And so it just goes out like that. Two times two times two, so okay. you can think about it that way. I like that because that's a nice visual way to look at yeah. it. Because I, I was thinking. I, I mean, I have the idea. I just wasn't 
looking at it from a simplistic approach. Sometimes the visual approach is the simplistic approach. Yeah, yeah, so. it's always good. Like you say, you're a visual learner. Yeah. I think it's good to try to draw pictures. Right? Yeah. I think it's very good to try I to do that with my pictures. students too. Yeah. Well, if you get the idea, let's move on. Yeah. I'm gonna, okay. yeah. Let's see if we, let's see how <laughs> much we can cover. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hence, that that also explains now very clearly on the previous problem. Uh -huh. So. Why it's sixteen. Why it's sixteen. Yes. Right. So okay. what's next? Do you, have you highlighted all the ones that are due, or should I go back to? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, I'll, and I'll catch it. So we can do a so we can do a selection. I mean, just do, we can do one of each group and then go okay. move on, and then that way you can kind of go back and fill in. And then draw a diagram, or diagraph. Diagraph, yes. For each of the binary, so x squared equals y squared. So remember, you're dealing with this, all right, so we're, all right, for those of you tuning in, like Jesse, we're in 13113, we're looking at 13113. We're looking at part A. Okay. So the di digraph has um, points or nodes and and edges. So. Oh man, this is getting to the stuff I didn't cover. <laughs> so <laughs> well, but uh, but, but I, I, yeah. even you can look at these pictures on the page. Right. Yeah. And get an idea of what's going on here. Okay. So we won't we won't tell that you ate in the room here. <laughs> I don't. Uh, maybe it's legal in these rooms. I don't know. I, uh, They're not going to rush me and my dad's are cop. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and they wouldn't so have trash cans in here. No, they wouldn't. <laughs> Can we kind of go a little bit earlier just to refresh myself yeah. real quick? Yeah. Uh, yes. So in this example, one. Okay, so. Okay. The way I'm looking at it is you have to match up the numbers. So that is true. All right, well, let's look at this example here, mm -hmm. example 13, 111. Can you see how this is related to this picture? I, I can, because like one cannot equal two, mm -hmm. but when it's one squared plus two, that isn't, that's still less than. Right, so it's a satisfying. Right. Yeah. So that's why the two and the one can correspond to each yeah, other. Yeah, right. All right, so, I mean, just basically, the points here correspond to the points here. Right. And then you draw an arrow if this condition is satisfied. Right. So and some of the arrows are one way, like one to four. Right, because one squared plus four will still get you less than ten. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes that's right. That's correct, okay. Okay, well, okay, okay, okay. So, so in I, this yeah. case... X two equals Y. Now this is there's actually a mistake here. Um, there should be circles on all of these. Um, some of them. Okay. Because one oh, squared plus itself. one is less than or equal to ten. Two squared plus two is less yeah, than equal to ten. Binary. So there should be, should be a circle there and a circle there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a mistake. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, okay. Oh, but save. there's this. Yes, there. okay, save, that's okay. Okay, all right, so. yes. Okay, so I'm not buying it. Yeah. yeah. So like this one, it's x squared equals y squared. Yes. So negative 2 so this one. and 2. Yeah. When you square both of those, they yeah. should equal the same. Yeah. Yeah, so actually this one would just be onto itself. And then, so you'd have the circles. And it seems to me that that's it. Uh... Yeah, that's you would have the circles that, around right? those, and then circles to each other. All right, so if I draw, oh, but it's the squared quantities. If I draw that so here, one thing we did forget is I've got possible negative numbers one, squared. One, two, three, 
Yeah, yeah. but like negative one and positive one, when you square both of those, you'll still get one. Right, so those, so you can have some arrows <coughs> being drawn to others. So this is negative right. two. Yeah. And actually, you, would, you could actually do that for all negative of those. one, whoops. You negative square one. two. Mm -hmm. so. But you can't do Zero. a square root of two and negative one. Or no. not square root. One. Negative, negative two, two and one. Two. Because those, right. those won't match up. All right, so where are you putting arrows? So, okay, on the first one? Yeah. Um, um, that negative see. or negative twos can go to each other. So the, the, you mean this one and this one? So this is actually a, mm -hmm. right. So it's, it's actually a bidirectional. Right. right. Correct. Right. And then what else? Um, negative one and one. No, it's another bidirectional. Zero would. Well, zero squared is just zero. Yes. Yeah, so that onto itself. So that would just be the so, circle. So there's a circle here. Right. Well, there's a circle around all there's of them. There's a circle for all of them. All of them. Yep. Okay. And I think that's probably about I it. I think that's it since it's just x squared, y squared. Right. Yeah. You're equaling y squared, I'm sorry. Right. Okay, so that's not too bad. You're right. Yeah, I, I think you can that take the same like approach on all the other ones. No. Definitely. <laughs> Uh, well, as long uh, as they follow the statement. Yeah. Yes. So I think you can handle those other Yeah, I, just, I should be able to. Now that I'm getting right. diagraphs, I just have to read the definition and kind of and get a you will have. Uh, do you know you have access to this here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have it bookmarked on my computer okay. at home. Okay. So this one was what? This one, let me just put in. This one was 13, one what? Uh, eight. 13, okay. one eight. Okay. All right, well, let's move on. Cool. 13, six. 13, two, six. All right, so let's see what that looks like. So, doing the partition properties of one. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so here there, we're talking about the relationship between partitions and uh, relations. Uh -huh. And if you look at this figure 13.4, uh -huh. what this is showing is that uh, in this picture, the A, B, and C are all related to each other. Right, they're belonging some. I mean, A is related to B, B is related to A. Uh -huh. C is related, B, B is related to C. Uh, and and so on. So all these are mutually related to each other. So in fact, it's a it, there are arrows every which way here. Yeah. Now this one, all these are related to each other. Correct. There are arrows every which way there. Uh, then this one also. But onto itself. Yeah. Since that's only that's one. only one. Yeah. Right. And then these and then these. So these these uh, divide the entire set A up into into so we sets. Can, so just as an, uh, as an example, we could uh -huh. kind of look at this as something like we've got, say, the set of real numbers. Right. Okay, but only certain, we, and then we kind of partition off the real numbers. Right. So maybe we have real numbers that are positive. Well, that are if you want an example, how about this? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, something like All that. Right. I mean, so, here you've got one, this, the two minus two, that's one set. Right. And then the one minus one, that's another set. Okay. And the zero, that's another set. Okay, so those, so you would have three So in that case, partitions. you have three, three, well, a partition of three sets. I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. All right. You have a partition of three sets. I just gotta, I just gotta, I gotta devote, I gotta just find the time. <laughs> now, another, hard. another place yeah. where this, where you've seen this before, is uh, modular arithmetic. Uh, like you have, if you do mod three, then right. you have zero, three, six, nine, etc. Degenerate. Those are all equivalent mod three. Right? Then you have one, four, one, four. What's the next one? Seven, seven etc. And ten. And, and, right. and also the negatives, right? Minus two. And so on. That's, yeah. Those are all equivalent. And then you have okay. uh, two, five, eight. Right. And all those and those are all equivalent. Okay. So you have all the integers are in one of those three. Right. And each one of those three, if you take any two in one of those sets, they're all they're equivalent, right? Okay. So that's that's really a good example to keep in mind. Yeah, okay, I like that one actually. Because that, yeah. 
Right. And so, so you have a there there you have an equivalence relation, like you say equivalent on three, and you also have a you also have a partition. You're dividing up the all the integers. Okay. Okay. So if so in this case, x is yes. greater than or equal to zero. Yes. If I create a number line. I know. Of course, these are real numbers. So they're not just integers. Right. right. Yeah, elements of right. right. That's not cap row, is it? All right, yeah, this is this is a good one to do. Similar to figure thirteen four. This is a Which is this guy? Yes. Okay. So you're making one of those. Right. Well, it's not, but I think people got messed up with this because it's not exactly like this. What you want to do is, is you've got two sets here. You have a diagram there. Circle the two sets. Um. Where, where are the two sets on your picture? All right. So the first one has to be all the reals that are larger than or equal yes. to zero. Yeah. So we can just kind of start off with zero, inclusive. Yes. So if you do it on the number line, I'm thinking a solid circle this way. Yes. So a solid circle. Right, and then this way. If you were to do it like on the traditional number line. All right, well, but it's a set, right? So it should include everything. Right. So there you go. Yeah, you can do it that way. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. I was thinking, or, yeah. Or, I, or, I mean, if you, if you do a circle, you would just circle all Oh, so we want it like okay. So he just means. But but this is but this is fine. I can see I can see what you mean there. Okay. That, that's. So that's the set. That's the set R one. Right. And then your other one would then be the circle. Now, how do we diff in a case like this? How do we differentiate? Like, we can't have them kissing each other because. One of them can't include zero, right? How do we denote? Well, that? it's it's you. I mean, you can't. Maybe I'm I mean, getting too much into it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can do it roughly, right? Uh -huh. I mean, certainly the zero is in one set and not in the other set. Okay, but in overall, in the well, real. Now, if you want, one way sorry. you could do it is include the zero as a dot. Uh, the, which one is is which one is it in? Which one is zero in? Zero is well, in the Well, zero's in the purple. So, yeah. So, so you could put a purple blue, dot at zero. Yes. You can also have a parenthesis. Yes. And then we can go from... Da -da -da. But you could put a purple dot for the zero to show that the zero is Right. Purple. Like, make a legend saying purple inclusive, or blue is not inclusive. Or something like that. If it's a blue dot. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, I have to color through. Yeah. Okay. No, that's... It's just, it's just forming an order into all this. And, and, uh, all right. system now this this one patients. is going to be interesting. Graph the associated binary relation. You only need to graph from mm. negative five to five. Now, the thing is that you need to understand what the graph of a binary relation is. Mm. The graph consists of shaded areas, not points or lines. Go back and look at an example of a graph of a relation. Thank you. These are graphs of relations. But none of them are shaded. No, none of them are shaded. No. But you can see that they're that they're not that it's I mean it, it's really a graph. You draw a Cartesian right. and then you have a set in the uh, X Y plane. Okay. So we've got something similar here. So I got one graph. Yes. So the so the graph the associated binary relation from negative five to five. Okay, so graphing it. Um, what you want to do is you want to include all the points yeah, that are related to each other. So if x is related to y, you want to include that point in your graph. Okay. 
Okay. So if it's like the first part, all of these are inclusive, so yes. <clears throat> this whole area would be shaded. All right, all right. Now be be careful. Um, mm -hmm. It's true that all of these, that every any one of these two is related to each other. So what would you shade as a result? Well, the first quadrant. The first quadrant. Because they're all the positives. Yes. Mm -hmm. I said that because you had, you had said everything here, which is not. Oh, my yeah. bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this one would be all the negatives, so they would be in the third quadrant. Okay. All right, so the interesting question is, what about the axes? Right, so which one include? Well, the purple one would include the axis because of the zero. Yes. Yeah. But this one would not. All right. Just this axis or both? Be All right, good. Okay. So I think. And you you'll get a better version of this. This is just my scratch work yeah. book. I'm sorry. Uh, do you want us to, when we graph these, did you want us to show it like as if it's. Cartesian plane. Right? Yes, yes, you. That's okay. what it is. That's what a graph is. Okay. Well, I meant. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know if you meant literal or figure in a figurative sense because I didn't. Like I didn't know if maybe this would suffice or you want you have to have. Well, let me read the question first. Yes. Okay. They, okay. So literal graph. Yes. Okay, it, yeah, it, okay, means, no it means graph. Yes. So yes. Yeah. yes. It means graph. So yeah. Cartesian. Yes. Yeah, not okay. not just indicate, but it's, it's gotcha. actually graph. Yeah. So this would be okay. Yes. Just That's what he wants. Yes. Actually. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's, let's see. Uh, so I think we can pass B and C because they're quite similar. Yeah, right. it's similar. It's, it's the same idea. Yeah. Let's move on to 13.2.8. For those of you... Define a binary relation, or relation from the given partition and show that the relation above or has the above three properties. Excuse me. Okay. All right, so uh, let's see, how many of these did I, with D and, D and E, okay. So if you do 13, 2, 4, B, if you want to see what that is, it's here. 13, 2, 4, B is, uh, whoops, oh, for, okay, okay. If we are concerned only with people given names. Yeah. Let me see. Okay. All right. So, yeah, actually, this is not a particular given name. I thought. I don't know. If, I don't think he is, you assigned well, just DNA. Well, yes. I mean, we could use B. Just yeah. So yeah. No. Can. See, it's thirteen two four B. So that oh, that's means that. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Using so what you want to do is you want to define a relation based on this partition. Well, if you're concerned with only people's given names, yes. what Americans would call first name, yeah. we can partition any set of people according to given name. Each set in the partition consists of all people who share a particular given name. All right, so what, based on this description, what you want to do is uh, give a relation, right? A relation is, so is something of the form A to little b, if and only if, blah. A to little b, if and only if. It's since they're the same names, I'm going to assume b to back to little a. Well, first you have to define the, define the relation. Okay, where a and b are. No, so we're looking at the set of names. We're looking at a set of people. The same names. No, the set okay. is oh, yeah people's yeah. names. Well, the set is people. Yeah. And and you want to define a relation between people. The first names. So. Well, so you have to you have to person. What you want to do is complete this sentence. Person A mm -hmm. is person A twiddle person B if and only if. And then complete that sentence. Twiddle person B if and only if. No, it's a twiddle, not an arrow, right? Right. No. Twiddle. twiddle. Oh. Yes. Twiddle, yeah. 
quickly. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, no, quickly. <laughs> I'm just going to go. Yes. If and only if. And this relation has to be correspond to this partition. Well, don't when I'm reading this, don't overthink this. Yeah, I'm thinking it's people B. with the same name. Yes. Yeah, B to A. So it would have to be like that. Well, what what you said is correct. Okay. What you wrote is not what you said. Okay, so you said two people are related. related to B. Right. So what did you say? Because they have the same name. Okay. All right. So. So they would have to be reflective. Well, so but you haven't written down the relation. You said oh, it, you but have you to didn't define, write it down. Yeah, you have to, you define, have to define the relation. Are. Right. Maybe it's good to see an example. So yeah, yeah he. You have to. Yeah, you can't just. You have to say, you have to define A where A is persons of. All right, so for instance, the example here in 1327. B is persons of this specific name. Where X All right, now here's, the a, same here's, a, here's a partition from 1323A. Right. So go back to 1323A. Okay. So set of real numbers. Every real number is either rational or irrational. So that's a that's a partition of the real numbers. Mm -hmm. You've got two sets, rational numbers and irrational numbers. Okay. The union of those two is all real numbers. Right. And they're disjoint. Right? A number is either rational or dis irrational, but not both. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is a this is a partition. Now see how this relates to a to relation. It's just saying the same thing with different words. Yeah. Here, you, here your concept is that the set of R, there are two sets. Within the set of R. Two, uh, two sets that make up the whole set. That's right. the concept. Now relation is you're looking at points and you're seeing, you're looking at the points. And well, there's see. names that are going to be the same and names that are not going to be the same. So here, see here, here the relation, the corresponding relation is x is, re x is related to r if and only if x and, x and y are both in q or x and y are both in, if, in i. So you would need to say something, something similar. Okay, so a, y are elements of uh, the set of people. Which is P. Yeah, which you can. Okay. Can you draw a picture of this partition? Just draw a big bubble. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, people have different names, like John. Right. right? So you've got, like, John. Yeah, just Those are all the Johns, the right? Yes, okay. Yeah, yes, okay. That's a small one. <laughs> My name's not very common anymore. Yeah. You've got Jeremy's. Yes. You've got Chris's. Okay. All right. All right. And so well, we get the idea. idea. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so, the, so each one of these sets, I mean, the entire set, is is made up of these sets. Every person has one of these. Every person is in one of these. Right. Now, how can you tell whether two people are are related according to this? Relationship? Well, they have to be in the same bubble. Okay. Yeah. So, how do you say that here? So, a b element of p and yeah. Okay, because you got to meet yes. another condition. So, yes. and a b. Um, I want to say intersect. I'm use, I, I'm, I can't use the right. I what do a and saying. b represent here? Names. No, the they don't people? represent. They, the no, they, they don't represent the same people. They represent different people. Yeah, different people with the same name. Well, see, that's what you have to write down. Yeah. Oh, oh, so you that's just want to literal? Need, that's why <laughs> oh. you need to write down. Okay, okay, okay. We're thinking way yeah, yes, too. No, you're okay. thinking okay. way too much. So okay. where A and B are people with the same name. I actually was going to go into something like. Uh, a is 
equal to B. All right, so, now, yeah. now, here, you, you said more than, well, so, when, well, here you have people, right? You, a and B are people, right? Right. They are people. So I say person A is related to P, person B, if and only if uh, A, B is in P, you can say that again. Right, so the people. Uh, where A and B are people, but that's the same thing as this. Yeah, you're just saying the same thing. A and B have the same name. That's yeah. so you can cross off the R people. Yeah. Part, since you already defined. So okay, well, same first name, right? You have yeah, to say same first I name am, to B. Yeah, first name, correct, because of the stipulation. All right, well, see if this is, this looks like a... Okay, so I am answer. overcomplicating. Hello? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, hey, who is this? Oh, is this Lucas? I, I'm starting to get an idea. Okay, all right, very good. Hey, I'm in class now. Can I call you around 9 o'clock? Okay, I'll call you back. So, like... All right, thank well, you. Bye-bye. Okay. You need to upgrade your phone, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, my, my, I have $50 on this phone. After I use up the $50, my wife said I can get a, a smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one of these. Oh, I love mine. Yeah. A Google Pixel. Do you, do you use a WhatsApp? It's a Google Pixel. But no, I don't, yeah, I don't use what. You know. Okay. What, what, what uh, social media do you use? Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> okay. I try to okay. avoid social media okay. as much as I can. I'm, I mean, I'm because sorry. I, I, I think that people don't use email so much anymore. So oh, I oh I've got emails on here too. Okay. Okay. You do use email? That's the only form. All right. Of, but, uh, but some people don't, don't use email anymore. So yeah, I'm not sure what they usually do. usually communicate through Twitter, Facebook, that type oh, okay. of thing. Or texting. Or right. texting, yeah. All right. Although texting, though, is... In, is not a good idea because of uh, that's that's you're gonna get on a slippery slope there. <laughs> well, but I have to adapt to what people do. <laughs> well, to be fair, and me working at CTC, I can tell you uh, that last thing I want is to give out a phone number to potentially hundreds of students and then just random texts in the middle of the night while I'm sleeping, things like uh, that. Yeah. Usually well, email, email, emails are that. usually the best. I, I, I don't have to potentially take. hundreds of students. So well, that's true too, yes. That's true. All right, well, let's get back on point here. So now you've got the relation. Okay. Right. And then you will need to show that this relation has the three properties, reflexive, symmetric, and traced, which is what you were saying before, but now, but you have to break up the problem the right way. Whoops. Okay. So, so you need to show that this relation here that you stated has the right properties. So, well, it's reflective. Of course, I'm going to have my same name. Yes. I'm me. Yes. Yes. All right, but you're not the only person in the world. So you can see how they do it here. Here, here the uh, relation is species. And here's any animal is always the same species as itself. So you can say something similar. Well, here. I'm my own identity. Yes. You're, okay. well, reflexive in the sense of you're a person. Yes. Well, yes, All right. but... Well, yes, that's, is... that's true. But I, I'm just saying that. Right, right. You're not the only person. That's true of any person. Right. 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 What he's saying so, is you can have, you know, a cat and another cat. They're still the same species, yeah. but they're different cats. I think I think we're all in the same. Yeah. yeah. Well, n n well, but she's well. What she's okay. saying is that. Um, I mean, I agree with your point. You have the same name as yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because each person has their own identity. Okay. Because they always have the same name as themselves. Yes. So. Oh, I'm getting that yes. confused with some. Okay. Never yes. mind. Yeah. Okay, so reflexive is on. All right, so I, yeah. you can just write it that way. What, we each have our own identity? Well, no, but, your name uh, all right, but, oh. but we're talking about names, right? right. <clears throat> so you have, basically, your name is, well. So person A will always have the same name as person A. Yes. It's the same person. Okay, right. yes, that's right. Same, that's the reflexive. Yes, that's, that's reflexive, yes. I think I was thinking uh, transitive, was that? Well, what you, uh, well, we'll see. Okay. 
So with symmetric. Right, so symmetric is. Well, with symmetric, if I meet someone with the same name. Yeah. That obviously, if their name is the same, then. It's so you be have the same two for me different too. people with yeah. the same. Yeah. Right. Subset in this yeah. case, the same subset of same of names, the same name. So, so just phrase that generally. So person A shares shares the name or first name of say person B, but both are in. Well, but you should think you should say it this way. Okay. Because here it says x twiddle y implies y twiddle x. Okay, right, so okay. A, okay. so you can say A is related to S. Hello? And then Y. Is this Trey? Yeah. Right, S of Y. Hey, uh, I'm in class right now. Uh, can you, uh, you have a question? I kind of want to, he still wants this person form, a. though. So person A is related to... Oh, so I'm, I'm in uh, Heritage Hall 203. No, not P. How would we? Wait a second. Uh, His P is all V. Yeah. Um, so. All right. Well, I, I'm in. I'm in class. So maybe uh, it'd be better to. Uh, so person A is related uh, to P. Well, I don't know. You can stop by and say a. hi, or we can meet up tomorrow or Thursday. Because it's P represents all the people. Okay. Okay. Not necessarily right. the same name. Okay. All right. Thanks. So to define. Yeah. Probably a better. Subset. Probably it has better. The same yeah. Names, we can okay. say something like P. I right, could. I see that. Bye bye. Okay. And I'm not sure if that was supposed to be a. Are these supposed to be? That's supposed to be a superscript. Yeah, that's a subscript. Yes. Okay. It so is. yeah. So we're thinking that. Okay. And then you got your. Um, your. Uh, I don't know why I want to keep saying mapping, but. Well, you want to say something like this. Mm -hmm. So this says. So I mean, the way that it said here is x is the same species as y, implies, implies y is the same species, species as x. x. Right. So person A um, is in the same subset. Well, you don't even need to refer to subsets. Subset. You can so just so say. So person A is, has the same name. Yes. As B implies person B also has the same name as person yeah, A. Yeah, that's, that's really what you want to say. Okay. I, <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's so, that, yeah. that's li that's yeah. the that's the translation of this statement no. into this particular instance. That's the same. And you're okay with us just literally writing it that way? Though? No. The, what the the mm -hmm. I, uh, the idea is you want to just the the idea is just can you translate the general concept into the particular into the uh, okay. situation? So don't uh, don't overthink it. Okay, don't, that's what I keep doing. I want to yeah. keep. I'm trying to be rigorous. Don't in don't the oh, yeah. Don't overthink it. It's just it's just taking this template and applying it to your situation. Okay, so you you're not looking for us to. Yeah, it's not a proof. It's just an okay, application. Gotcha. Okay. I gotta get past that. <laughs> oh, okay. all right. So then transitive. So transitive, if I have person B have the same name as me and person B has the same name as person C, then, yeah. then I have the per same name as yes, person that's, C. That's which one? Transitive yeah. substitution. Yeah, that's all one. Okay. So person A has the same name as person B. Person B. Are you teaching classes in the summer, sir? No, I'm not. Okay, you're going to be back. Dr. Roberts, Dr. Roberts is. How many classes are offered in the summer? We only have one. So it's usually special topics. I oh, yes, always at topics. Okay. Uh, the problem is that um, you have to, technically, you're supposed to have enrollment of 10 students yeah, for a summer class. Right, yeah. And it's hard to make two. Oh, my God. So we recommend if you want to take two classes, take outside classes. Right, because something computer science or, or right, because I'm going to have to take a computer yeah. science. I think, what's the minimum for, is it 18, I think? I don't know what, what is the minimum for our master's? 36 credit hours? 36 credit hours, yes. Okay, 
but uh, it doesn't so, have. But the, what is the minimum for math? I'm assuming 18, 24. So, so you can take up to four outside. Outside, okay. Yes. So that's that's us 12. 12 yeah. Credit hours, so two thirds in math, and then one third in the outside. Okay. So 24 credit hours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, All right, I'll, so I think uh, you knocked that off. I think I'm starting to get a feel for what you're. I think I. I think I'm just getting way too crazy with the. Yeah, the I think. Well, it's certainly not. Thinking. Not. Uh, it's, I. I mean, this I'm thing about partitions it. and equivalence classes is. It's the same thing. We just want to to. Uh, point out that it's two slightly different ways of looking at the same thing. Right. And it gives kind of a different perspective. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, I understand it's the generalizations that we form from, because when you're young in your math career, you specific, you work on specific examples and then the idea is you form generalizations. Yeah, that, that. yeah, that's, that's abstract. Yeah. Right, hence abstract. Mm -hmm. But now we're going in like, well, for that particular last problem, it was going in reverse. You have a specific example, take a general idea and make a, spe a specific thing out of it. All right, well, let's look at this one here. Okay. One yeah. of these three. You All want right. to take a pick? So is it mine? Uh, let's do A. Oh, A. I think okay. A. So is it mine? I think A. No, we're not doing A. Oh, let's do B. I mean, it doesn't matter. Let's do B. Let's continue. Basically. Now, do you remember what P of n means? Partition. No, not pa partition. P means power set, which means the set of subsets. Okay. So it's the set of subsets of natural numbers. Of the natural numbers. So like 3, 4, 7, any, any... It's a transitive. Yeah. So the relation is contains it, it contained it, to our subset of. Okay. Mm -hmm. And... It wants us to explain our answers. Yes. Is it reflected? Subsets of that. Okay. Well, I would... All the... I would think so, because you can have a set of, say, 4, 7, and another set of 7, 4. Uh, or am I thinking really. of that wrong? Yeah, well, write down what reflexive means in this case. Well, reflexive is itself. It's the identity of it. Mm. All right, it's well, the same species. Well, just write... What, what I think you should do is, is uh, again, write down exactly what reflexive means. Mm -hmm. um. Where is... Well, where does it say? Or her. Yes. So reflexive is like on back onto itself. If. So A mm -hmm. would yeah. Be a. All right. So with this relation, this relation is is subset. Now remember, then your A's are are set are sets. So they mm -hmm. have to be the same. Right. So in this and your relation is your relation is uh, contained in or. Subset of. So, do so is that true? Where are we? I guess it's the page book. Mm -hmm. So do we have all of the subsets reflecting? Well, what you want to do is take this and substitute this this language. Or if we're doing a binary. So net is, is a natural reflexive. I would or think it, it would itself? be reflexive because it's pretty much like an A cross A thing. Mm. Yeah, I'm kind of forming an idea. When that. you have all of the sets, so you can have A to A, B to B, and so on and so forth. Well, but that's not that's not really what we have here. Mm -hmm. 
the elements that the relation is defined on are subsets. They're not individual numbers, right. which is what it looks like you're putting there. So in this case, the, the little a here actually represents some subset. It's got to have at least two elements. Yes. Well, no, it could have one element. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, any, subsets. Any now. arbitrary subset. Right. And this twiddle represents what? That they're related to each other. Yeah. What's, but what's the relation in this case? The relation is that one containing the other. Yes. So can you... So your A represents a subset. Your twiddle represents contained in. Okay, so is A contained in A? Yes. Well, yes. Okay. All right. See, so don't overthink it. That, that's what this is. That's what this. But is it says saying. explain your answer. So. Well, <laughs> well, explain. Look at yeah. when these this explain. Explain your answer is just this. Yeah. Th these are ex explanations, right? So the subsets are always going to be the same as the subsets. Like that's well, my problem trying to explain. No, I know, I know how you feel. Well, what you what this the the mathematical sentence is what? Write down write write down the mathematical sentence and then and then. Well, just each it. subset is reflective against the set because they're all within the set. But you can you can write down what this you can write down this this statement using this notation. Okay, so... So the binary relation. No, I, I want something a lot simpler than that. Yeah. Okay. I, I think... I just, you can just write a very it, simple yeah. mathematical statement with letters. And I would, rec I would recommend instead of small letter A, you use big letter A. Yeah. A contains in... Well, not literally, but... Well, you can put, you can, right. instead of saying the word there, you just put the symbol. Right, what's the symbol for contains? It's a, this one. So, proper subset. So, A contains A. Okay, and then the rest of it is... I mean, I mean, this, this statement is simply, you don't even have the word there. It's not actually not contained. It's oh, subset so of. I can oh, just okay, have this. Can, okay. Yes, that's the statement. Now, if you want an explanation, right. just say any set is a subset of itself. I mean, that's the, that's the explanation. Any set is a subset of itself. Uh, so write the I'm write the hesitant. write the and statement. I should just say it. Yeah, you write I, the I statement, kind of the translation, and then the, the explanation is just what it means in words. Okay. Which makes sense too. I mean, that's just basic set theory at that point. So okay. then, with symmetric, it would be symmetric because A can go into B and B can go into A. That's not an A. So. All right. No, but let's go back to the statement of symmetry. Right. For symmetry. Be 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 careful about this. Look at all the symbols here. All right. Now, yes. Now, this is extremely A. important. Right. No, there. No. No, it's just one. Well, way. you, you. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Yeah. No, that's that. No, that's right. That's important. Yeah. Reflexive should be. Yeah. And then, well, I'm sorry, but. I'm well, yeah. Different. Don't confuse this double arrow with this single arrow. Right. The single. This. This is just saying that the symmetric means this. Right. Yeah. But the single arrow is what's important. So that's what this means. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is this true? Implies. I wouldn't think so. A. Right. And the, the thing you do if something's not true, give a counterexample. A yeah, counterexample would be maybe you've got a subset, say one. So like one, two. And just leave it at is one. In okay, or that. One, two, three. Yeah. But. One, two, three is yes. not in. One, exactly. Two. It's not in. It's not contained in one, two. Exactly. Okay. 
Just, and set, just make set, set brackets. Yeah, just set brackets. Mm -hmm. So you yeah, have those where everybody looks. I also call those the squigglies. Squigglies mm -hmm. after. Okay. You have squiggly yeah, vertical. This is starting to move. <laughs> okay, this is starting to <laughs> flow a little bit okay. better. Yeah. Okay. okay, but you see the point here. And you want to write down the, the you list. want to write down the the statement using set notation. So if A is in B and B is in C, that tells you that A is is in C, which that is true because A is a subset of B. The if and a C is, is a bigger than B, so yes. it'd have to... Yeah, so it just say that in words. Mm -hmm. So if A is contained in B, yeah. and B is contained in C, then yeah. A must be contained yeah. in C. Yeah. All right, Dr. Fine. I'm getting an idea. So it's now. obvious <laughs> when, you, when you think about it. You need to but, but, like, for instance, the symmetric, at uh, first you thought it was true, okay. but then when you really unpacked what it meant, so no, therefore, true. this is not this doesn't satisfy all the yeah properties. That's, that's right. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, that's a good one. I'm I'm in my head, so I'm just gonna run to now. We'll do the rest. All of right. It. Let's see. All right. So what's next? Ooh, counterexamples. I can do yes. those. <laughs> so we can do one of these. All right, this yeah, should be back. All right, so figure 13.6 is... Okay. To where it's not transitive? It's not transitive. Which which one was it? It said oh, I'm sorry. figure um, binary relation C. Okay, yes. Okay, so this one. So that's not transitive. And so counterexample. Not transitive. Transitive is transitive is, is yeah, right. substitution idea. Right. So you can draw one where um, you don't have a double arrow going to all of them. Yeah. Are we redrawing it? Uh yeah, good question. Give an example. Give an counter example. And figure yeah, okay, so yeah, just redrawing it at this point. Okay. Okay, here we and go. that one does have this. Mm, explain why it's impossible to find a counterexample. 13, 2, 17. Oh, that's for C. That's for C, yeah. 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 Is there a hint for the first one? There are there actually exactly three, three counterexamples. Counter Good, so draw one without. You can draw two double arrows, but one without a double arrow, and then the other two would be the other. Well, no, arrows. you're given this relation. You yeah. can't change this relation. Oh, we can't change it. No. Okay. This this is the relation. Show that it's not transitive. Oh, show that it's not. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Not actually come of it. You can't change you it. You can't change it. Okay, gotcha. You have to show that this you have to show that this the analog of this statement fails for something. So this is saying if one corresponds to two, two corresponds to three, three has to correspond to one. To one. Is that true? No. My battery, why is my battery running low? I'm plugged in. Uh, good question. It's not a power switch, is there? So, is the you power mean, plug mean even <laughs> on? <laughs> wow. So they have dummy plugs. Here. <laughs> it's possible. They are still All right. So there's there's a wall. There's a oh, wall. Oh, I know over there's here. some. So Jeremy, here we maybe can I'll switch. switch with you because I have to get okay, over here. Because I know there's some plugs where you actually have to turn on the light switch for it. Works. Well, maybe maybe the switch is. Oh yes. There look are down, switches. Look under. down below. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, there's actually a thingy right here. Oh, but it's... I think I think I lost it. Two goes to three. Three goes to one. Yeah. But that's not true. Yeah. Two goes to three goes to one. Well, we'll see. But you, you have to show... But we have to show a counterexample. Like, we can't just declare that it's not true without... 
Well, it looks like it's still recording. I don't know if I believe that. Okay. <laughs> Here, I think I'm going to stop it. Okay. And then just to, and, and then, then just to I didn't. Uh, well, sorry, we we had a okay. power outage, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you missed something. Okay, I'm sorry. But, to flow for this. Okay, let's this see. Where what are we on now? Uh, thirteen three something. Thirteen three eight. Okay, all right, let's go. Let's go there. Okay. All right, so I can't really show you the picture. Actually, so possibly we could. Have the picture, so I can now send we have to the show picture. the part. Yeah. But uh, but uh, so ba basically we we drew we drew the set A as a bubble diagram and then we drew a partition similar to. Uh, well, you can do it in OneNote, can't you? Yeah, I can do it in OneNote. Yeah. The problem is I don't have my stylus with me. Oh, you can borrow mine. Sorry. I've got a I've got mouse. No, that stylus doesn't work on this. Okay. Yours is just a regular touch screen, or is it? It, no, it's, I think it's, I'm not sure what it is, but it's a different technology. Is it Bluetooth? No, no, it's... Okay, then yeah, definitely can use, use Do you have a... Um, yeah, I can... I do you can, have USB? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay, so it's just regular Wi-Fi based. No, it's not. It's a, it's a USB, but it's a different... Uh, some sort, I just some need form my mouse of back. NFC. <laughs> yeah, it's some right. form of so NFC this is 13 point, what, 3.8? Yeah. All right, so the picture is, we can try this. Yeah, this actually should work pretty well. So here's my A. I think it should have gone, let's see if it actually went down there. Oh, it did, look at that. Okay, and then uh, you're dividing this up into pieces. So this is A1. The words are going to be kind of A2, etc. Uh, look at the idea. Okay, so this one. Right okay, and then here we have, the, here's your function f. And the whole thing is that the, this goes to the integers here, so this is 1, 2, two. etc. And then everything in A here, everything in A1. Goes, we'll go to goes to one, and then everything in A two has to go to two, goes to two, and so on. So you can use your imagination, but this is the idea. This is the idea behind the proof. Okay. And each, these two points in A one are equivalent because they both map to the same number. So, like this one, you, maybe we could try something like. Let A B be elements of, let's say, A sub M. I'm just taking a shot in the dark here. Okay. So A, cap A sub M. Well, here, for number two, for part A, you mean? Yes. Well, again, this is what you want to show. Start with this. Okay, so we, okay, left Start right. with this and then try to get here. Okay. So what does this imply? What does A related to A imply? Well, A is a. Um... It implies that. Um... Oh dear, that's a mistake. This should be B. So that was in that was in. Uh, I give up. Okay. Uh, that was in the email. That should okay, be B. Okay. Okay. Yes. That should be B. Right. Oh, that was in the email just the other day. I remember that. Oh, one. that was the one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so in your picture, what does that mean? What does that mean in your picture? That A corresponds to some element in the... Just, just this, A related to B, what does that mean? Yeah. 
They're in the same partition. The, well, yeah, don't say same partition. Oh, they're in the same, 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 uh, same yeah, set. Same su subset. Yeah. yeah. My fault. So, the, so this means they're in the same set in the partition. All right. So you can see what that means on your diagram, right? Right. So A... And fancy P, B. Yeah. Well, no, you don't say A, A yeah, and fancy P, B. You just say A fancy P, fan, A twiddle P, B. Right. That, that's the that, relation. That's, that's your hypothesis. Right. Remember earlier what See, he said? See, the P you does the P does not belong to the B. The P belongs to the twiddle. What? The P mm -hmm. when there, the P there. This p this p belongs to the twiddle. It's saying that it's saying that the it's saying that this the twiddle a is related to b with the relation associated with this partition. So you write it like this. It's it's a. Mm -hmm. I'll leave a lot of space. Twiddle p, b. The second part of this is the p relates. The p is referring to the twiddle, not to the b. Oh, okay. It says we're using the relation associated with this partition. Okay, so if A is related, is a, a relation of partition B. P? Well, not contained. If you say A related to B. Right, if A is a relation of partition P. Yes. So what does that imply? So A is definitely in A, cap A. Yes, that's true. And well, no, it's, you don't say A is related to partition B. What you say is... Um, I'm sorry. I'm, if you yeah, wanted I'm to say that whole words out, you'd say A is related to B with the relation defined by this partition. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, okay. A With relation to... Partition. I misspelled that. Okay, I got it. Well, I mean... No, it's, if F is, if A is related to B by, or if A, yeah, if A is, not, I, I, um, let me flash this up on the screen. If A is related to B through, or by, um, all right, so we're starting, this should be a B, everybody. This, this A should be a B. Maybe I'm just butchering my words here. Um, I know I am. So what does what does this mean? What does that symbol mean? The uh, the twiddle p. What does the twiddle p mean? I want to say it goes to, but that's probably wrong. It says let twiddle p be the equivalence relation associated with the partition p. Oh, so a it, so a is equivalent to b yes. through partition. Okay, gotcha. Through that relation. Okay, so that's all you have to say. So um, that's what that means once we translate it. A is equivalent. Equ equivalent to B through the relation um, of P. Or, I don't know if you want to say through. But yeah, yeah, that's fine. That, yeah, that's, that's fine. fine. Okay, and don't forget. Uh, well, you already used the word relation, so that's... So if that's uh, assumed, because that's sort of an assumption here, then that means that f of a must equal f of b. So we have to show that part of this. Uh, that, yeah, you want to show why, why this statement follows from this statement. Right. Since they're equivalent to each other, they must be in what subset? What does it mean for two numbers? For two elements mm -hmm. to be equivalent with the equivalence relation derived from this partition. And what helps us go back to this? Well, because there's multiple elements of this, and what no matter your, what they are. But what are your two elements that you defined? All right, but A see, we're B. not starting with this. We're just we're starting with this. Yeah. We're starting with just a partition. Yeah. Okay, so like A one has B, or A and B. So in other words, 
If A and B are equivalent, they must both be in the same sub bubble. Right. That was smart. Yeah. So this implies this implies A and B are in the same uh, subset A so A B M in the same subset. Sure. That that'll probably. Well, that what you should to. say. Uh huh. Or the same partition. Well, no, you don't say same partition. Yeah. The, there's in this case they're n sets, right? Yes. One through a n. Mm -hmm. If a and b are equivalent, they must be in the same. Well, what you could say is the same a j. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And probably better way to say that is so it implies that a and b are both in a j for some j. Right. For some. That's j. probably the better way to say it. And do you, well, no, I'm not, maybe I'm, again, overcomplicating that. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have to say for some J in N? Uh, well, yes, technically you should say that for okay. some J, for, for some J na natural number and J. Natural yes, number yes. Right. Okay. So now at this point, the rest of it should go like. Yes. Like and because. Yeah. Because they are both in A, J, they would they both correspond to. Same. Correct. A and B. Oh, but Actually, you know, Dr. Brown, this helped out a lot, uh -huh. to be honest. Yeah, with well, it, I it's, mean, this yeah. is something you really need to um, talk Well, about. I think also the other thing is just getting an idea of how you are thinking uh -huh. about what's expected. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. now that I get a feel for yeah. what is expected. Um, well, you can do better than that, I think. If A and B are in AJ, if you know this, then you know what F of A is. Right. So, F of A would have to be a natural. Well, not not F of A must. Well, look at look at what it says. F here. of A must be what? J. J. Yeah. Good. Equal J. And how about F of B? And, and F, of F of B, B. Yes. equals so I think that, J. I think, so that and means... that implies yes. F of A equals F of B. The implication. Yeah, I think that's the clearest way to say it. Okay. Wow. Okay. I am going way too crazy. Uh -huh. That's why I like face-to-face. -face. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. This, is, this, yeah. this is really helpful. Yeah. Okay. So now part well we'll I guess we can do part B on our own. We'll yeah you know, I think uh, that's expected. Probably us. probably do that. So now, is, moving is on. Is there more? Yes, there's more. Okay. Oh, one more. So did I assign any from here? I guess maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. I should check. Oh yes, oh, I did. Yeah. yeah, but this one we is go just filled in the blanks. Yeah, that's four that's that's right. Right. And I don't know if there's any from the last one. You did shade them all, right? Mm-hmm. I can prepare. Yes. <laughs> no, there's one. There's one from here too. Okay, so we go. And there's probably one from here four. too. Yeah. Okay. But I don't see it. Why do you think I print off the textbook? Yeah. <laughs> I like to make notes. No. All right. This is good. Yeah. I'm surprised it printed this far because a lot of times, whatever the format of, of this is on, I'm assuming PDF. Like yes. It. Oh yeah, on the Sometimes website you PDF can get the PDF. Sometimes PDF doesn't translate correctly when you print them out on a printer. Because of like either different versions, every printer company has to pay. No, PDF is usually pretty good. Yeah, usually. I know like one that works flawlessly is LaTeX. Like it prints perfectly. Well, no, LaTeX produces a PDF. Right. Yeah. 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 But it, I think this is LaTeX. This book. Okay. Well, there you. Okay. Yeah. That explains that. Yeah. No, it's just I've had moments where. Maybe something was written in a previous version of Adobe PDF, uh -huh. and that could have conflicts with. Like, you you must printer. have some very old printers. Yeah. Some very old PDFs. Right, right, yeah. I do. And, yeah. uh, you know, printing on a newer printer that pays uh -huh. license, it's just a translation thing. Uh -huh. they, they cut how they program the printers. Because every physical printer. Yes. Yeah, well, the there's yeah, the, 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 the printer may not have the font, font installed. That, yeah. That's quite. That's probably the problem. All right. Well, let's look at this. Okay, so um, any all right. So I guess you have to you have to read the proposition first. Right. Yeah. Okay. So suppose F. 
And this would be good to draw a picture of, I think. So definitely range. And this will be well, with, with the A. Define a subset A, B, a discontinuity. This would be the follows. range. Okay. And we've got the codomain. So the domain, codomain, but within the codomain you have a range. The range are the actual mappings that work out, so to say. I think you want to take off the code here. Right, take off the code, because that's definitely the domain. And you're okay, and again, um, may, uh, maybe I'm just asking silly questions. We don't have to specifically have like a codomain and then a fully contained set within the codomain defined as range. The, the range is, is a codomain. Right, it's, it's in the codomain. Yeah. So well, the range, yeah, a range can, I mean, you can choose the codomain to be the range. Okay, 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 okay. Right, okay. there's no, a function doesn't have a unique codomain. Okay, so I don't have to yeah. draw. Yeah. yeah. Okay, with, um, like, really, really rigid. Okay. So, okay, continuing on. Well, I mean, what you're saying here is that if you were going to draw B, then that would be something co containing the range. Right. But your A, this is your A here. Alright, so what you want to do is draw draw a picture, representative picture. So okay. I mean you see little B there. So you want to draw a little B and then you want to see what that tells you. I'm gonna so step out. Okay. So, so if we have A one, A two, da 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 A. Yeah, we could. But I think we're okay with just going with A and B. Okay, because what we do know is A is definitely in A. Okay, and the mapping part of this Which is the, the functional of B right. Or F of A. F of A, right. So then B is in the range. Okay. So then okay, then it says in the collection of sets subsets of that partition is basically equal to all of the subsets containing Well when it says non empty I'm thinking like one to one and on to and non empty just means you have at least one element. I have an idea where he's where he's thinking on all this stuff, so it's good that he is here. It's it's helped me out a lot on how what I was getting way too complicated in my <laughs> previous work. So I just need to tone it down on the complexity and just be clear and concise and to the point. So then the collection of that from the okay. Furthermore, the equivalence relation of F derived from F is identical to the equivalence relation onto P derived from partition P. That is, there, okay, sum A1 is a relation to A2 through F if and only if A1 is a relation of A2 through the relation P. Well, we also have okay. So, okay. so we've got A1 squiggly with A2 if and only if A1 squiggly P A2. Okay. All right, so decomposing this, um, I, this is what I'm getting out of all this, is it seems to me that um, okay, it seems to me that you have some A1, A2, okay, and A1 maps to 
it, 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 so f of a1 has to equal some b. Likewise, some f of a2 also maps to some the same b in the range. Okay, that if that occurs, then it's also assumed that a1 is belonged in a1 and a2 belong in the same subset. Okay. So if a1 and a2 are in the domain, they map to the same element in the range b, then we can assume that a1 and a2 are in the same domain. I mean, I'm being very lame in there. Uh, I'm sure Dr. Thrawn would maybe throw a few uh, caveats here and there, but I think that's the general idea. So now we have to show that given any b in the range of f, show that a b is non-empty. All right, so let me see what you got here. So I see b1, b2, b, okay. So what are the relations between the a's and the b's here? Well, we wrote down this because it was up here. Okay. So, do you want me to explain? All right, so I want to see some, some a's that are equivalent to, to each other. How? Wh what would make two a's equivalent to each other? If they map to the same. We just, I just said it earlier. Okay, yeah, so I want to see what, I mean, can you... Can map to the same B. B. Okay, yeah, so show me in your picture. So, yeah, an arrow, let's say these two. Yeah. They map to the same B. So just pick any random B and have both so point to them. So A1 would go to B1 and A2 would go to B1. All right. Okay. So this is, so which twiddle is that? Is that, that's, that's this twiddle, right? Correct. And this is your function F. Right. Right. All right, now what does this one mean? That means that... But they they're are in the same partition. No, same set. Same is, set in the partition, yes. Right, which would be your domain. domain. That implies that they're All right, so, to so how is this partition. partition created? So... It gives it to uh, us. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's related as uh, you have a transformation of a... Uh, I, mean, you, I mean, we drew this picture of partition here, right? From earlier. It's kind of like this, right? Right. So, in this case, where is the partition coming from? From the domain. All right, see, see, see here? Or from oh. the set P. Yeah. Okay. Well, P is not, P is a collection of sets. Right, it's a it's your collection. So how is that collection defined? It's the set it's a subset A that will always, where all the elements in that subset A will map to that element yeah. B in the range. Yes. So maybe you kind of see the relationship between these. Yes, I, yeah, I kind of was going that yeah. route with it. Yes. So if A, actually I should say F of A1 equals B1 and F of A2 equals B one. Okay. B lowercase B are the elements of B and B is the range. Y y yes. As an element of B. Uh But if you're going to start introducing things like this, you have to then define what B is. So it's already know. defined. Yeah. Oh, they. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry, right, silly me. Yeah. yeah. So where B is an element of B. Okay. Then what can we conclude about A1 and A2? That they're in the same. Same what? A subset. Right, they're in the same subset. A subscript. B. All right. Well, yeah. So this this kind of breaks it down here. Yeah, actually, that's a nice. It's fairly sure. I just again, I have read it about ten times. It's so a it's a language issue, <laughs> but you kind of have to feel your way around the language to really grab hold of the concept. No, this is great. I like this. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah, I'm actually. 
I, I I can work through B through E. Obviously, I got uh -huh. I get the idea of A down. So now it's just me applying myself to get the rest of it. Unless you want to do some more, Amanda. No, I need to wrap my head around the other one first right. before I go on. Okay. All right. Let's see what else we have. And that's fill in the blank. Yeah. Down there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're on thirteen dot four. So this, yeah, this is these are all kind of variations on a theme that you you're you're relating partitions to equivalence relations. And uh, so we talked about how a partition makes an equivalence relation. Right? That that when you have this picture, if I drew if I draw any old partition at all, any old partition at all. Okay. And I say, well, everything in this set is equivalent. Everything in this set is equivalent. Everything in this set. Everything in this set. Mm -hmm. That is, you can show that that's actually an equivalence relation. Okay. So any old partition at all, no matter what, no matter what, just take your set, slice it up. All the slices are, are equivalence classes. Okay. So that's... Now you want to go the other way. You want to say that if you have any equivalence relation, then, it's then, those, then the, those equivalence classes create a partition. Okay. And that's the point of this exercise. So, both of these. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Let's see. Um, no, I see. No, all right. So that's not the point of this exercise. This exercise, <laughs> well, this exercise <laughs> cites it, those so. two facts. Okay. So. Right. Um, so that's what these are saying here. So then we also know. Okay. That, okay. So now suppose we begin with a partition P. So I guess what it's saying is that if you take a partition and define the equivalence class, you, you can take a partition and find the equivalence class, right? Right. So what it's saying is that if you just take those equivalence classes without knowing what partition it came from okay. and create a partition from that, then you get back your original partition. Oh, okay. So it's basically it's it's, an in, yeah, it's sort of an invertible. Right, they're, they're invertible yeah, to you. Yes. There's a Okay, so but uh, but on um, not but obviously dealing with sets. So okay. So it's just so an it's even just, more generalistic approach to what we had before. It's it's basically just understanding what it's it's not deriving implications. It's just understanding what the words mean. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me actually read all of it. Yeah, it gets it gets a little bit wordy. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so that's so what I think one of the said. hard things about this is to how do you show that two partitions are are equal? Well, the way you show you, the way you can show two partitions are equal is take any set uh -huh. in one partition and show it's also a set in the other partition. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go back to. Basic set theory equal mm -hmm. is definitely cardinality is the same. And if you yeah. look at it in the sense of cardinality, we can look at it in the sense of. Yeah, well, what you want to say, I mean, the basic way to show sets are equal is to show every element of one set is an element of the other set. Right. Vice versa. Uh -huh. I think I get a general idea, and I, I think I can go from there on this. I just have to realize I can't get to stupidly complex. Like just or try to you may lost you may not words. have to go you may not even have to go to that level of detail but right. I think you can do that. Just keep it simple and uh, to the point. I, I I'm gonna have to, I'll, I'll work through that on my own. I, I get an idea of where to go from there. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think the difficulty with this problem is 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 that showing. To like I said, to show two partitions are equal. Just show every set in one partition is also a set in the other partition. Yeah. So maybe you, know, you can start with something like uh, 
you can say suppose a you can say suppose um Suppose A J is uh, is a set in the partition P. Right. Then if A J exists in P prime, then. But we have to show for all, so. Well, if you show for an arbitrary one, then it shows. Then it shows for all. Okay. For all. Yes, that's right. So then A J must also be in P prime. In the partition. Yeah, so, this is one I mean, of those that's that simple, maybe, that's, this w this is one of those that is maybe t it it trips you up because it's easy. Um, uh, I'll I'll, I'll uh, have it now. I think I'll have to play with it. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then part B. Yeah, I, I, think right. I get an idea. With well, the the, the nice sure. the nice thing about going forward is this is as deep as you go. Now we go back to modular arithmetic. And yeah. As I said, that modular arithmetic is is a good example of equivalence classes because uh, I I think we even had a picture earlier that that, mm -hmm. that showed uh, how modular equivalence divides the, the uh, integers up into the equivalence classes yeah. and it's too bad there's some good exercises here but we can't but I kind of ran, kind of ran out of steam here yeah. I'm running out of steam. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, no, truth there's no no sense pushing past your limit. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things that I just, given the time I need, it be, again, we're master's level students, we're working on our master's, so mm -hmm. we should um, have the the um, the drive to do this on our own. Stuff that we may not necessarily have covered in class. But we know it's there. We should be able to just work on it on our on our own time. So, well, I'm finding out that uh, there's it's very very difficult to learn math from it is. print from a print a print source. That too. Um, no, Dr. Tom, it'd be great if you came back and actually just like covered some classes. Uh, yeah, I would actually well, thoroughly enjoy that. I haven't had. I think I've only had one class with you before as well, an undergrad. Uh -huh. um, but it wasn't. It was the algebraic functions class, I believe. And that one doesn't. Oh really yeah, that count was. Yeah, I was filling in on the summer for something. That yeah, because I, yeah. I remember you were class surprised class. because I had finished the entire coursework before the class started. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And then I just showed up for the. I believe there was a midterm and a final. Well, that was completely online. I don't think. That's, that's correct. Yeah, but the tests I remember showing up for. But yeah, it was. Just, so like I haven't had that many undergrad classes with you, so I haven't had a, an idea of what the ex, your level of expectation is for these, uh, for all of these classes, but I'll, I'll adapt. I mean, that's, again, mm -hmm. that's just me. Mm -hmm. I have to adapt. I don't want to make excuses. I actually had them for three classes in one semester, all on the same day. I, I remember you, <laughs> yeah, working on a lot of his assignments at the AML when we had free time in the lab and it wasn't so yeah. busy, busy with well, students. I guess. I mean, but it's good, though. I, th I, I I appreciate the level of toughness, I, believe it or not. I think of math as like playing the piano. You, you, you just have to, if you practice. You, you have to. There, there's just some mechanics that you have to do. Yeah. And the only way to do it is is through homework. It's the only way. Yeah, you have to do some. There's some trauma involved on your part. Yeah. But, but uh, on the on the other hand, if you get too wrapped up in the mechanics, you can't. You don't see you. You have to somehow. You have to be good at the mechanics, but you also have to see the big picture. If you just wrap, if you're just completely wrapped up in the mechanics, then, then you yeah. can't. You did you can't. That was awesome. That was also. A